Hi there, so for the past several weeks, I've been diving very deep into the world of Nooks. I've used both the Nook Glow Light 3, which is over here. I also have the Nook Glow Light Plus, which is really interesting as well. But I have to say, it is very different than using a Kindle, and I want to make sure I do a proper comparison just on the software. In today's world, having a good software experience is arguably more important than the hardware, and I don't think the Nook does it very well. And just the overall summary before diving into the whole video over here, I don't recommend buying a Nook because the software experience is not that good. And I'm going to break down every single piece of software the Nook has, kind of compare it against the Kindle and explain why I feel the Nook software is a deal breaker for buying a Nook. Now the first impression most of us have with software is unlocking the device and unlocking the Nook from sleep mode really is not a pleasant experience. Every single time I press the home button or the power button to wake up the device, the first thing I have to do is swipe to unlock. And I find that to be very frustrating. It's just one extra thing I have to do. There's no reason for it. I really wish the device would just simply go to the home screen when I press the power button. Now to be fair, on the Kindle, there is also a swipe to unlock. However, it's not quite the same. I have the Kindle Paperwhite over here, and this version will require me to swipe to unlock because I did not purchase the extra 20 bucks to remove the advertisements from the screensaver. But on my Kindle Oasis, I did purchase that. So when I press the power button on my Kindle Oasis, it goes straight to the home screen. But on this device, I have to swipe to unlock. But I can always pay the 20 bucks extra later on to remove that extra friction. It's a small detail, but it really makes a big difference. But say you don't care about that and you just want to get the device and you unlock it and you go to your home screen. One thing I bet most people do care about is the clutter on the home screen. Now on the Nook, when you unlock the device, you go to your home screen, you're going to see suggestions for books all over the place. In fact, there's no place I can find right now where it only shows the books that I bought and nothing else. On the Kindle, they have it really focused on the books that you bought, that you own, or that you put on the Kindle itself. On the Nook, I am constantly bombarded, no matter which screen I go to, with book suggestions, and it's really annoying. Now again, to be fair, on the Kindle, when you buy it out of the box, it does show you book suggestions on the home screen. But you can go to the settings and turn that off. And once you turn that feature off for the home screen view, all you see on your home screen are your own books. And I think that's really important. You don't want to be constantly seeing ads for other books when you're browsing on your device. Now another very important part of software on any e-reader is navigation and just ease of getting around different menus. Now the Nook does things in a very interesting way. They have these five tabs at the bottom of the screen. The first tab is supposed to be for your own books, but again, like I mentioned a second ago, it's not just your books. They have a whole bunch of other books mixed into your library. Again, I tried going to the settings and turned off all the settings for this, and it's still showing me all of these other books that I don't want to look at. So even if it's your book section, you're seeing a bunch of other things there too. The next tab is for the Barnes & Noble store, which makes sense when you have a bookstore on your device. The next tab over here is strictly to open up the book that you're currently reading. I do find that pretty cool. They have a dedicated button just to open up that book that you're already reading. The next tab after that really makes no sense to me. It's this weird Barnes & Noble book excerpts kind of section for blog posts and other samples from other books. Again, it's very, very clear that the Barnes & Noble Nook has a clear balance between showing you your own books, but also trying to get you to buy other books or explore new books. I don't really like that. I want to have a minimal feel when I'm reading a book. I don't want to be constantly seeing other things on my screen, but this device has a whole tab just for that. And of course, the last tab is a search menu. Now on the Kindle, things are a bit different. There's no tabs at the bottom, but they do have a bunch of buttons on the top. And I actually prefer this because once you turn off that home screen view and all you see are your books on the main screen, you don't really have all these other menus to choose from. I actually like having less options. And on the top, it's very, very simple. You have a store, you have Goodreads, and you have settings. And there's also a search bar. There's no confusion of what those things do. They're all labeled. One thing on the Nook is there's no label between the icons. On the Kindle, every icon has a label. Now, one other very important thing regarding navigation is the Kindle does not have 
have a home button. And I actually think that's the way every device should be right now. In 2021, every modern device, whether it's an iPad or a phone, whatever you might be using, chances are the home button is no longer a thing that's on the screen. Back in the day, it used to be a very popular design element, but right now it no longer is. And on the Kindle, there's a very easy back button you press to go back. No matter where you are on your device, you can always find that back button and you can go all the way back to your home screen. There's no ambiguity about getting lost in the menus or anything like that. On the Nook, however, it's very, very annoying because in certain screens, there's no way to go back to the home screen unless you press the home button. It's really weird. Some screens have a back button, other screens don't. But point being is this home button is required for much of the use of the device. If this home button breaks, you're gonna be in trouble because there's no way in the software to exit certain screens. Now, another very important aspect of e-readers for software is note-taking abilities. I read a lot of nonfiction books. I highlight things all the time. If you're interested in knowing what books I read, link in the description down below for my email and newsletter. I post updates every week with the books I'm currently reading. But point being, note-taking is very important to me and there's a very big night and day difference between these two devices. On the Nook, I really don't think they optimized for highlighting at all. You can do it, but it's not very front and center. It requires a lot of extra work. When you press and hold on a word, the dictionary comes up. I kind of expect that. But when I press and hold and highlight a sentence, it doesn't highlight. It kind of goes through each word and it shows me dictionary definitions for each word in the sentence I'm trying to highlight. If I actually want to highlight sentence, I have to press and hold on one word first and then drag the cursor at the end of that word into the whole sentence so it highlights it. It's very, very annoying. It's kind of like this extra step, press and hold on a word first, let go, and then go back and drag and drop. It's really, really weird. On the Kindle, I just drag my finger while I'm reading on the whole sentence. It knows what I'm doing. It highlights the whole sentence and take a note really easily. That's really important to me. I don't want to have to worry about friction like that when I'm taking notes on a book. And on the same topic as notes, all the highlights you take on this Nook over here are kind of sandboxed on the Nook. When I take notes on my Kindle, I use an app called Readwise. I love Readwise. It basically takes all my highlights from my Kindle and syncs it to a third party service like Notion and I have all my highlights exported automatically without me touching a thing. Readwise will also email me every day with my highlights to review them regularly. On my Nook, I can't do that at all. Also on Kobo, it's a limited feature, but on Kindle, it's very much integrated and I love that ability. If you're into taking notes, I think you have to get a Kindle because Readwise only works with Kindle right now. Now, another very important part of software is speed. And I don't think I can state this enough. The Nook series is extremely, extremely slow. I think the biggest complaint I have about this device, putting everything else I set aside, is the slowness. And again, I don't think I can emphasize this enough. Things like opening a book or going to the settings or trying to highlight something, it just takes forever. It's very sluggish. I open a book up, I have to wait five, 10 seconds for it to load and load and load. Sometimes a pop-up will come up. It's really, really weird and it's not really optimized. And I think reading should be a very mindful activity. I'm a big believer that reading is something you should do for fun, to decompress, something you enjoy doing. But on a Nook, it's like using a piece of technology that just does not work all the time. It's very, very frustrating. Now, to be fair, again, on the Kindle Paperwhite especially, I have my complaints about this as well. It is slow. I have a whole video talking about the speed of this thing and comparing it against the Oasis. But even on the Paperwhite, this is not as slow as the Nook is. And I'm talking Talking about either the Nook Glow Light 3 or the Nook Glow Light Plus, they are both equally as slow. At least on the Kindle side of things, the Kindle Oasis is very, very speedy. The Kindle Paperwhite is a bit sluggish at times, but not nearly as bad as the Nook. One more thing I will say over here is the Nook Glow Light Plus costs $200 and the Kindle Oasis costs $250. If you're considering either of those devices, I personally feel the $50 extra for the Oasis, the speed improvement by itself will justify that cost. Now one good thing about Barnes & Noble is they come pretty close to Amazon's book catalog. It's really hard to compete with Amazon when it comes to number of books available in their store, but Barnes & Noble does come pretty close. From my limited use of the device so far, they seem to have all the books that I would want to buy in their catalog. Pricing was
was a bit different at times. Amazon pricing can be a little bit cheaper, but I think a lot of this will depend where you live in the world. In the US, at least where I live in Connecticut, having an Amazon device is very, very advantageous because you have all the books available from Amazon's catalog. No other device can really compete with that quite yet, but Barnes & Noble does come pretty close. Overall, I really do think that Nook has a very big limitation with software. I cannot recommend buying a Nook because of the software. The hardware at times is pretty nice. If you're into page turn buttons and home buttons and stuff like that, the hardware is cool. It also has a nice warm light screen at a low price point. So that's also really nice. But the software experience just kills the device completely. I don't recommend buying this because you're gonna regret it in terms of the slowness and all the other quirks I talked about. I have a whole video dedicated to the Glowlight Plus that I reviewed the hardware on. If you're interested in seeing more about that, link on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.